today, and I want to thank the Golden Jubilee Committee for inviting me here, and I want to thank your village priests, your village chairman, and the village leaders, and also my co-speaker uh, uh, for this wonderful opportunity to interact with your village youth and students. One of the reasons why I accepted to come and speak here today is because my colleague, Miss Lisa Ledrissa, no? she is the branch head of our small initiative in Senapati district. And that is why I have an obligation to come to your village. The other reason why I came is because my village is not far from your village. I am from Tetsumi village. You people call us Tilume. It's just across Lai village. And I have heard from before, and I have seen from Lai village, your village several times, that your village is actually a Keza village. I am a Chagasan, and Chagasans have got two language groups, Keza and Chokri. And I have heard in the folk story that after the village was abandoned, people from Pomai community and also Keza community came, came and established a new village. And so today, when I went around your village, I could understand this folklore better. And so I'm very happy to come and spend time with you this morning on your occasion of celebrating 50 years of youth and student organization. I want to share with you today that every human life or in an organization's life, it's always good to review, to rethink and see what we have achieved over the years. And Jubilee, 50 years is a landmark because that's 50 years. And I thought I would share with you today on the thoughts on self-employment and entrepreneurship. Because Nagas are not used to entrepreneurship. But for the future to come, we cannot survive well, or we will not be able to grow well without entrepreneurship. Government job is good, but business is far better than government job. And why I say this, it's because I am a student of economics. I was an economics lecturer before, and I love reading. And so I used to read a lot of history books. I love politics, and I used to read a lot of political books as well. But I chose economics in my masters because there were not many people from Nagaland in those days, in the 90s, who chose to take up economics because economics needed necessarily 10 plus 2 mathematics. And so Nagas wouldn't like to take up economics because they would not like to take up mathematics. So for two years, I took maths tuition but I decided that I will take this up because there are few Nagas. And in 1994, after my graduation, and I ended up in a tea garden, one of the, in fact, the biggest tea garden in Dibrugar district in Assam. The family used to have 10 tea gardens and nine factories with a cyclical employment of 20,000 plus people and with regular employees of 10,000 plus people. And that was the time when I was 22 years of age. I first got the impression of what business is. And so today I want to share with you on this topic. 
you, many people confuse me to be an entrepreneur. I am not a business entrepreneur yet. I am a social entrepreneur. I am known as a social entrepreneur and I was the seventh recipient of India's social entrepreneur. Every year, India used to elect the, the so-called the best social entrepreneur for the country. And so in 2016, they elected me as the social entrepreneur for India. And so many people get confused with business entrepreneur and social entrepreneur. I am known as a social entrepreneur. But I'm now going to be 52 years in May. And by, because I hit 50, like your village today, I decided I will review my life and I will rethink about my future. And that is why after 50 years of age, I decided to actually shift towards business entrepreneurship. So I am slowly exiting from my previous profession of being a social entrepreneur to that of business entrepreneur. So last year, I shifted a lot to explore about entrepreneurship, business entrepreneurship. And so if you meet me after five years or 10 years, you will see me as a business entrepreneur. But at the moment, I do not reflect business entrepreneurship. The chief guest, Jiko, yesterday I, I couldn't come and be there with you, but we know each other well before he entered politics. And I am a social entrepreneur, and therefore I used to encourage farmers to take up business activities. But we Nagas don't know what is business. And so today, I want to tell you why it is so important for Nagas to think business. I want to share with you how Nagas have developed over the years. You know, in your village, maybe 50 years back, 60 years back, or 40 years back, you might have thatched roofs in your village. I don't know, our speaker, whether in the 80s you have thatched roof or not. <clears throat> but in my village, till 1990s, we had thatched roofs. And in the 80s, I would see my father and mother hidingly taking out rice and giving it out to some families where there is shouting and crying at night. And I would ask my parents, why are they hiding it, taking paddy? And he would say, don't tell that. The family, the husband and mother, the husband and the wife are quarreling because there is not enough food to eat. And the children are crying because they don't have enough rice for dinner. So, <clears throat> hiding Lee, my parents would take rice and give it to them. That was in the 70s. In the 80s, in the 70s, people eat only red rice, brown rice. White rice was only meant for the rich. And of and the village level, we were considered rich because both my grandparents, my great-grandparents, my parents also gave feast of merit. So we eat white rice. Whenever my age mates, we gather to eat together, I don't understand this aspect. My friends would eat white rice without even curry. They say that it's very tasty. But that time, you people will not know. Times have changed. We have language barrier. So I don't know whether all the elders who are here will understand English well. But our pastor also will understand our chairman and our village priest, all of them will understand. Times have changed so much over the last 40, 50 years. Today, people don't like to cultivate anymore. BGP government is giving free rice. 
Even the village people are refusing to cultivate pedi. But 50 years ago, whoever had the best pedi field, the best woodland, and livestock would be considered the richest. Times have changed. I have given this speech of mine. I wish some of you read seriously because this is the thought of a social entrepreneur. And this thought, I am telling you, is very different thought. I taught economics. I taught, I taught economics for four years in Thailand. And I do give talks to IITs, IIMs. So when I want to request you people, when you get time, please go through this paper presentation again, because this is a new thought for Nagas. I will not be reading it out as it is, because that will make it boring. But I will follow what I have thought through and I have put into black and white. But I want you people to read this seriously. And if possible, as part of your Jubilee uh, report, you can include this paper and your villagers who are in Delhi, Bombay, Senapati, Impal, Kohima, Dimapur, wherever they are. Even if they cannot come and be with you today, I wish they read this. I wish parents read this because this is going to introduce the paradigm shift that we Nagas need. So if I am to tell you how much change has happened over the last 50 years, we have seen immense change because of government money. One biggest government money is government job. That is both prevalent in Manipur and as, as well as Nagaland, as well as in Mizoram, as well as in Nagalaya. What we have not seen is income from business. You see, even this house is made by government. And people will be overwhelmed to see that a big house like this is made by government. But I have seen business people. I have walked with business people. I once, my wife and I, we had dinner with Jack Ma. Do you know who is Jack Ma? Yeah, in New York. And these are rich people. When you meet a millionaire and you, when you meet a billionaire, it's very different. In New York, we were invited to for a dinner in a billionaire's home. And millionaires are nowhere. Billionaires are really different. When I worked in Dibrugar T estate, and in those days in Nagaland, police constable salary was 1,800 rupees. And my salary was offered at 25,000 rupees. So you can imagine, it was more than 10 police salaries. And a young boy of 22 years. And I couldn't understand why Members of parliament, MLS and MPs used to come to my owner's house. I couldn't understand. Their business was very different. I could not understand why contractors used to come and wait for an appointment with him for days. You know why? If they get a supply of mosquito net supply, 10,000, 20,000 employees means 20,000 mosquito net supply. And one mosquito net, if it is 150 rupees, and he gets a profit of 30 rupees, he is going to get how much? 3 lakhs rupees profit from mosquito net supply. Because in the tea garden, every week they used to give one life boy. 20,000 employees, one life boy each, every week, 52 times. You get the point? If one life boy they get 50 paisa profit, every week they're getting 10,000 rupees profit, and police salary in Nagaland, how much was it? 1,800 rupees. Then after one month, I realized, oh, this is business. 
I taught my villagers when they stay business. My father used to go to Chinjuroi village. I was showing my son. This is his first time traveling to, I think, Pomai areas. He is on holiday. He is only 13 years of age. But I'm very happy to let him know your village. You know, from Chinjuroi village, down that mountain slope, my father and my uncle, they used to do cattle business. They will go to Lanier River towards Sarafo, and from there they will go to my village. And they would go to Ukrul and bring cattle. My villagers thought that is the biggest business. Because my uncle, who died two years back, and he was 94 years of age at that time, he would tell me, my father is still alive, he is only about 84 years, so he's not very old. But my uncle and my father, in those days, the highest salary in Nagaland was school teacher salary. And my, one of my villagers, who was a school teacher, used to get 300 rupees. And my uncle and my father said, whenever they go to Ukrul and bring cattle to my village via this Chunjuroi, one trip, they used to get 7,000 rupees profit. One trip. So they did not envy a school teacher's salary. And because my grandfather was a rich man in the village, he refused to send my father to school. He says, you don't have to go to school. Work in the field, you'll become a rich man. You will have the best rice beer to drink. You'll have the best rice to eat. And of course, my father, who used to do business in the 50s, he would get 7,000 rupees, more than two years salary of a school teacher by just bringing some cattle. So in my village history, the biggest business was cattle business. Today, my people don't know how to do cattle business. Tetsumi, my villagers, don't know how to do business. When we talk about business, they think it's pan shop. When we talk about business, they think it's grocery shop. When we talk about business, they think it is printing press. When we talk about business, they think it's tea stall, tea hotel. Our people don't know what is business. And that is why I thought I would share with you 50 years, you must change your mindset. I'm not saying government job is bad. I'm only saying that there are better opportunities than government job now. 30 years ago, government job may be the best. I don't know. At that time, also, people didn't know how to do business. But today, 2024, 2023, I will 100% tell you that government job is not the best anymore. And this is what I keep on educating Nagas. But it's not easy to change. Because everybody in life don't want change. Only very few people embrace change. You have been told that government job is the best job in the world. And Nagas believe that it is the best job. Whereas if you go to China, people know business is the best. If you go to Japan, South Korea, if you go to America, Europe, everybody knows it is business. British came here the British came to my village in 1857, and that's how Naga Hills got divided between Manipur Maharaja and Naga Hills, and that was decided by Captain Butler in 1857 in my village. It is on British record. They came here not for government job, they came here for business. It is called East India Company Act. After that, it went to the crown, but before that, it was only the British company who was controlling India. So if you read Naga history, if you read British history, it's fascinating. 
the Europeans went all the way to Africa, all the way to Nagaland, in order to look for business. This highway, Imphal Highway, was created not for other things. It was created for oil, petroleum. That is why you have BOC in Imphal, you have BOC in Kohima. That is called Burma Oil Company. The British came to Assam, Arunachal, for what? For tea leaf. Tea. Here in Kohima, in Fal, we drink the worst tea. Whenever I want good tea, I go to Kolkata to buy. You know what is good tea in Kolkata? 2,000 rupees per kg. That is good tea. But in Kohima, you won't get. And if you want orthodox tea, 25,000 rupees per kg, you'll get in Kolkata, you won't get in Kohima. Our economy cannot afford People can't afford that type of drink, but tea is a great business. So British, they came to Assam, then they, after some time, they, they found out that oil is not only available in Burma, oil is available even in Assam, but that time under Naga Hills. <coughs> so, to cut the story short, British came all the way from Europe to our areas looking for business. But for Nagas, if you say you want to do business, they will say, no, 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 no. You should appear <coughs> IS exams, IPS exams, and you should not give up your public exams. It is not bad. But again, I'm telling you, it's not the best anymore. But because we had an egalitarian society and because we have traditional subsistence economy, we didn't have nobles, we didn't have landlords, we didn't have monarchy. And that is why we had sharing economy and we celebrated Feast of Merit. I don't know whether some of you know what is Feast of Merit. Feast of Merit is the feast given to community by the rich couple in any village. And whatever pedi meat they have, they share everything. In the process, they will get to wear one decorative arch over their house, isn't it? I think it's also the same system in your village. But they become zero again, and the husband and wife have to work again. So it's complete sharing of wealth, and because of which we did not have capitalists. And because Nagas didn't have capitalists, we didn't have investors. We didn't have business people. We were happy with what to eat. If we have enough pedi to eat for four or five years, that is considered being very rich. We don't understand, we don't have the concept of capitalists. So for me, when I examine our society, our culture, I come with two findings. One is market resource and the other is government resource. What Nagas have seen is government resource. This building is also government resource. But if Jabome villager have one businessman who is 100 crores worth, and that is not a big businessman. I told you, I have interacted with people who are billionaires. It's very different. 100 crores is only 10 million US dollars. 12 million US dollars. It's not a big businessman. That's like, okay, average, you are in business, so it's okay. You are a millionaire, it's nice. But they are millions of billionaires. But they're not millions of billionaires. And therefore, if your villager have even one who is a 10 crore party, means every year getting $1 million in business profit, for that person to build this house, he will build it much, much more better than this house. Unless he is very, very selfish. But how much can he be selfish? So if you have a villager 
who gets profit of 10 crores every year, then you will realize that, oh, business is like that. But if you have 100 Jabame people unable to make even 10 lakhs rupees per annum per year, then it is better to get a government job. In that case, even one army jawan may be better. So the government resource and the private resource are very different. I will give you an example of how it is different. In the year 2023, India as a country, India's budget is rupees 42.3 trillion, which means 42 lakhs 30,000 crores. So we can understand. Because in the Naga mine, we have one, two, three, four, up to 100, then up to 1,000, and beyond 1,000, we don't have calculation in the Naga, in the Naga vocabulary of arithmetic. Indian's vocabulary, crore is the biggest. The European vocabulary, the Western vocabulary is trillion and zillion. Bill million, billion, trillion, and zillion. Now it is mind-boggling because Indian rupees, 43, 42.3 trillion is equivalent to only US dollar, 530 billion. So it's not, 530 billion is not one trillion. One trillion is much bigger. Manipur state, last year they proposed 30,000 crores for Manipur state budget. But in the end, they will not even get, they will get hardly 20 crores, 20,000 crores. Nagaland state, they put a budget of 23,000 crores, but in the end, they may get only about 18,000 crores. And what is the total production of Manipur state? We cannot trust, these are all inflated, but it's called state gross domestic produ product. And that has been estimated at 43,000 crores, which is 5.3 billion US dollars. Manipur's total state production, including Loktak fish, including you know, Manipur food on the street, including Manipur government salary, including Chilu, Kebech, including Jabame Nagadal, Kashur. All this put together is only dollar 5.3 billion in one year. And you see Nagaland's all production, including all the government salary income, including taxi drivers income, including Naga selling pork, all put together is only 37,000 crores, which comes to 4.3 billion. I have written out there for you to study later on. So you think India's budget is so big because 42,000, 42,30,000 crores is really big. One crore is not small. 10,000 crores is very big. One lakh crore is beyond our comprehension. But this is 42 lakhs crores. So you may think, wow, so big. But let us look at business house. Tata Group. Tata Group will not disclose all of their money. But what is officially told to people is Tata Group last year, 2023, they got 12 lakh crores, means 12 trillion crores. A 12 trillion rupees, which is equivalent to 150 billion US dollars. Reliance, you know Reliance company, Geo, all this. Reliance got 9.75 trillion rupees, which is equivalent to 115 billion. So whole India's budget is not very far from 
two companies, two business houses in India. Now you get a slight better comparison why a person like me is talking about business. And last year, Toyota Company, Toyota Company has gone all over the world, but in India, they have a business called Kirloskar Motor India Limited. Toyota Kirloskar Motor Limited. And the Kirloskar family, they also manufacture motorbike, they also manufacture generator, but they also have partnership. They have 11% partnership, 89% is Toyota company. And in India, last year, they got revenue of more than 34 crores, 34,000 crores, which is almost the same budget which Manipur State and Nagaland State put together will get. What you propose is different. What you actually receive is different. Because Manipur is a non-revenue state, Nagaland is a non-revenue state. So when you put together <coughs> both Manipur and Nagaland budget, actual budget will be almost equivalent to Toyota company. Now that is business. When we have Jabame people in Senapati selling dry fish, what is that called? That is called livelihood. But we Nagas don't know what is business, so we call business. In that case, I think it is better to be a Manipur uh, Chokidar in the government setup instead of selling dry fish every day in Senapati. But if that person knows how to dry, sell dry fish and knows how to utilize money, don't underestimate. In Kohima, there are many street vendors who save 3,000 rupees every day, only selling vegetables in Kohima. 3,000 rupees into 25 working days is 75,000 rupees. Money they save every day, every month they save. Every day they save 3,000 rupees because we are, they work with our office and we have told them how to save money. They are saving. They are now able to buy land in Kohima. They are able to build their houses. They are able to buy cars by just selling vegetables. But that is called self-employed because once that person gets sick, nobody will sell her vegetable. That is called self-employed. but. Very dangerous business activity. I would not ask you people to end up doing that job because self-employed is dependent on your availability. That is self-employment. When we talk about entrepreneurship, it's like Tatas, it's like Toyota, it's like Reliance, it's like God Reach. You name it. So I have studied and found out that in Nagaland, there are many people who don't get 10 crores rupees in a year profit. Very, 10 crores, very less. And I have not come across Nagas who get 100 crores profit in a year because we don't have business people. But I want to tell you, Jabome people, you have to change your mindset. And some of you have to start <coughs> thinking that you will get 10 crores in a year. If you don't get 10 crores in a year, then you should not tell me, you should not introduce yourself to me that you are in business. You know why? It's not because I am underestimating you, but then you are not doing justice to business. In order to get 10 crores profit, you will need minimum 35 crores revenue. Otherwise, you won't get 10 crores profit. How many of you, because of this Golden Jubilee, will be able to decide that I will take a business and I will get at least 10 crores profit in a year? I don't know. 
These days we have no distinction between men and women. Men can do business, women can do business, but you need to give in yourself completely to do business, not half-hearted. And so Napoleon Hill, I don't know whether you have read Napoleon Hill's books, but I love Napoleon Hill's writing. And one of the classic that he wrote is Think and Grow Rich. Think and Grow Rich. And in his book, he said, whatever the mind can conceive and believe, the mind can achieve. I will repeat, whatever the mind can conceive and believe, the mind can achieve. Napoleon Hill. And he was, his son was born to him with no ears. And he decided that his son will hear. And he worked with his son again and again. And after having finished school, his son could actually hear. No ears, but through the teeth, he could, sound could be transmitted through his bones to his brain. And his son also became very rich by selling hearing aids. And this person died very rich, but for about 20 years he studied how, why some people are rich and why some people are not rich. And he came up with a book called Think and Grow Rich. And in that book he said, whatever the mind can conceive and believe, the mind can achieve. So if you want IAS, if your village wants IAS, go ahead. Nothing wrong. Please get an IAS. But if you believe, if you conceive, you will become an IAS. If you conceive, you think, and you believe that you can become 100 crore party in one year, mind you, you will become. That is called mind shift. And that is why today I want to tell you that out there in the world, life is very different. Out here in Naga country, life is very different. We don't know money outside government coffer. So during election, we fight for Nagas, fight for election only to go and get money from the government coffer. You use muscle power, gun power, you use money power in order to get more money from government coffer. But that was not so earlier. If you want to be the village leader of Jabome, they will think twice to become because you have to spend your money in order to be your village leader. Today, in order to become the leader, you, you take full advantage of government money. You don't think about planning, you don't think about competence, you don't think about abilities, capabilities. So, because we want only government money, even our political system is being affected. Our social structures are being changed to suit, to suit what we want in the government offer. I am just giving you an example of how things are. I want you to know that at the international level, you know, India is today called 3.7 trillion economy. All India's GDP put together, the one who is making tea, the one who is making puri, the one who is manufacturing car, the one who is manufacturing satellite, all their income put together is dollar 3.7 trillion. India. And that is out of five people in this world, in the globe, one is an Indian. India is very big. Territory is 30% of China's territory, 15% of America, maybe 20% of America, uh, USA territory, but population is one fifth of the world. And India's all production put together is only $3.7 trillion. Whereas America's is 23 
China is almost 18 trillion. So you can imagine how rich China is, how rich Americans are, because Americans is 23 trillion, and there are only 330 million people, whereas India is 1.4 billion people. It's sometimes you will get confused because numbers keep cropping up like that. And I love it because I am a student of economics. So I like comparing these issues. And I realized India is only 3.7 trillion and government of India is very happy. Now we are very rich. They're not very rich. How much is Microsoft? Microsoft is 2.4 trillion dollars. And Amazon, both are American company, 1.3 trillion. So when you put Microsoft and Amazon company put together, it's equivalent to whole India's wealth. You get the point? Therefore, I used to make fun. There is nothing to be proud that India is 3.7 trillion economy. I have gone to China a few times. I have listened to the Prime Minister of China and I have seen that they never boast. China Prime Minister always say, we are a developing society. But China is rich. I have gone and attended India's top meetings in Delhi. I have attended China's top meetings. You cannot compare. The opulence, their wealth, richness, you cannot compare. When I go to Delhi and stay in Taj Palace for Indian meeting, it's, the hotel is very good, but it's different. When I go to China to attend, before I reach the hotel, they would have lined up all sorts of gifts. Their wine, their whiskies, their eateries, the gifts will be there. It's very different. The opulence, China is so rich, it's almost mind-boggling. And I realize that Chinese roads are even better than American roads. How? Not by government job by business. But for us, Nagas, we do government job. So if you go to office every day, then they will start thinking, are you mad? You are a government officer. You should stay at home and enjoy your life. And if somebody like Lisa, my manager, if she goes to my office, reaches there every day at 9 a.m., her family members and her neighbors may be looking at her and say, huh, why are you so sincere? They will not understand that if we have to work, we need to have strict regime. If we work up to five, my, my, my staffs in Kohima, I have about 150 staffs, employees. They stay in the office till six. And people cannot understand why they stay in the office till six. But you go to China, and at 8 a.m. I used to hear drills. Oh, oh. And I thought, oh, the armies are having drill. When I look out from my window, hotel window, there are people who have come to work in the hotel. Uniform drill, and they will go home only after 10 p.m. And they will be back by 8 a.m in the workstation. And I said, that is why you cannot defeat China. No chance. Not possible. For Nagas, if you're a government servant, not, not for all the servants, our speakers here, sir, he'll be very sincere because of that he's getting responsibilities. But you might have seen some of your villagers who are government servants, maybe in Kohima, in, in Farsinapati, they may go to their office at 11, and by 1.30 they will get out, or by 2 p.m. they will get out, and everybody will ask for solid pay. Now, that government working culture has not only destroyed India, it has destroyed Nagas. 
So for us, when we talk about entrepreneurship, that is not possible. I told you I am now going to take a business. For me, if I don't work 14 hours a day, I will not be able to succeed. Even though I want to sleep, I will not be able to sleep. You know why? If we don't work hard, there are other people who are working much harder than us. So in 2000, was it 2014? I'm not very sure. No, maybe 2011 or 12, there were seven Chakasans who got top 20 in metric. And the Chakasan Students Union wanted me to be the chief guest to give away the award. So I came in, out of seven, all of them were studying in science college. All of them. And they were late by <coughs> 45 minutes. So the chief guest waited for 45 minutes. And I asked them, they said they had one class in science college so they couldn't come and their parents were all apologetic. I asked them, how many hours do you study in a day? And most of them said two to three hours. So I said, you deserve not to be top number one, but you got top 20, very good. If you want to be top number one, you cannot study less than 10 hours a day. And all of them were studying in science college in order to become doctor and engineers. So I told them that you better be careful because you will serve the IAS. And the IAS are those people who are not studying in science college in Kohima. They're studying, most of them are studying in arts college. And then the IAS will serve the politicians because most of the politicians are party workers, third class students, student leaders. So they all laughed. So I said, you people who are the most intelligent among the Chakasans in your group will end up only joint director or director, but not principal secretary <coughs> or not chief secretary or not commissioner. So you have to start thinking. Then they got shocked. And I said, I don't give money because I don't like the Naga way of calling chief guest only for money. <clears throat> so I, as a chief guest, I don't give money. But I said, I will give you money because you all were late for 45 minutes. And luckily, I had more than 60,000 rupees in my pocket. So I said, I can distribute to each one of you 7,000 each. So from there, I gave each one of them 7,000 rupees each. I said, for being late. I want them to remember in their lifetime what is money, what is punctuality, and what is planning. That was more than 10 years back. Now I don't know how many of them are doctors, how many of them are engineers, I don't know. But as I said, if they're engineers and doctors, at the most they'll become a chief engineer or engineer in chief or director or principal director. But same pay scale, they will have to serve under IAS. And IAS have to serve under MLS ministers. <coughs> that is government set up. Not even one Chakasan there <coughs> have ever thought about business. And that is because parents teach you, they will say, study hard, get good marks, then you will become a government officer to a five-year-old, four-year-old, six-year-old boy or girl. So that boy or girl thinks, if I am successful, I will become government officer. But if you don't study hard, you don't get good marks, you fail, then you will come and look after our cows and pigs, you will look after our petty field. So what does the boy and girl, five year, six year old think? They start thinking, acha, okay. Failure means looking after pigs. Failure means looking after cows. Failure means agriculture. And it's in our mindset. 
Do you know that many of our land here in Jabame area is also <clears throat> one hectare, one lakh square kilometer uh, feet can give 20 lakhs rupees income in a year after five, six years of maturity. I don't know. You have to start thinking. You can plant persimmon. You can plant even plum. I don't know whether your land is too hot for plums or not. You, whether your land is too hot for persimmon, I don't know. But you have to come up with some fruit crops and you can have an orchard. And after seven, eight years, if you get 20 lakhs per annum, that is equivalent to three salaries of army jawans. I'm not telling you don't become army jawans. I'm only giving you an example of monetary benefit. My friend, his last job was with the UN. And now in Imphal, he is milking cows. And he realizes that there is money in dairy, milk. There is money in piggery. I have a small piggery farm. There is money in piggery. But the distinction between profit and loss would be feed. Feed, what the cows eat, what the pigs eat. If you can take care of that, there is money there. So my friend has been running his dairy for one and a half years. <clears throat> and it, he has proved that one milking cow every day can give you 1,000 rupees. And now he has eight milking cows and other smaller cows included. It's about 20. Next time I will tell you his name if he hits 20,000 rupees every day. But he can even get more than 20,000 rupees because he can make dahi and sell in infal, double profit. Milk, one kg is only 80 rupees. If you make dahi, it becomes 200 rupees. If you make curd, it can become 300 rupees. So that is called food processing or value addition. He is getting that done. If you see this highway, Nepalese are running hotels. Nepalese are running dairy, no maram, no mau. Maus, they have some hotels, food hotels. I don't know about pomois, very less. Most of the pomai boys and girls, they think money is there in Delhi, Bombay, Kolkata, Bangalore. They don't think money is here in Senapati. Therefore, I want to challenge you people to start thinking differently. Our mindset has to change. If we don't change our mindset, we will not grow. Many people don't understand why Nagaland is so importantly placed. You will be surprised. Sometimes some people have told me, many times actually, that Naga areas is landlocked. You know what is landlocked? old blow from everywhere, no seaport. So I keep telling them, you need land corridor, you need land trade. If Nagaland has got international boundary, then how can it be landlocked? It is land linked. Changing of mindset. So whenever, because I'm part of IML, standing committee member for Niti Ayok, the one which replaced Planning Commission of India. My tenure will end in March this year. So for six years, I've given my service. And when they tell me that Northeast is landlocked, I tell them, no, change your definition. 98% of Northeast land boundary is international boundary. How can you call it as landlocked? It is land linked. You just see from your village, you can see international boundary, Burma. You can see Tusom. You can see beyond Tusom. From Tusom, just if you cross the other side is Leishi. After Leishi, then it is Tamanti. Then that is Kamti. It's all interconnected. But for us, these mountains have got no meaning. We don't have ecotourism. We don't have any business because we only think of government job. 
You can think of government job, no harm in that. But somehow, some of you who want to do business have to start seriously think outside the government job. And that is why Nagal Naga areas are very strategically positioned. If we change our mindset, we will become so rich, we will not be even able to comprehend what have we Nagas been doing in the last 50 years. You won't believe. Because I have seen money. I know what is money. And I have seen how rich people are by doing business. I am spending my time with you only for about 40 minutes. I will not be able to tell you everything what I want. But what I can tell you is, it is time for Nagas to think differently. It is time for Nagas to change our mindset. If you have a government job, very good. If you don't have a government job, don't worry. There are better opportunities. And if you want to do business, don't settle for 10 lakhs profit in a year. That is not business. That is self-employment. If you are a doctor, medical doctor, and you have your own clinic, and you have 20 lakhs income per annum, that is very dangerous. 20 lakhs is very small. When you get sick, your clinic will fail. You better think of business system, and that is called entrepreneurship. So I want to challenge you to start thinking why the British came here and why they left in a hurry. And because of which Naga territory, some are in Burma, some are in India. Today we are unable to even read our own history. There is a book written by Bertil Lindner called Great Game East. So in my speech, I have written the Great Game East. That is the game played by China and India in South and Southeast Asia. So the book is about the game of China and India. I think if we Nagas have 10,000 Naga businessmen who can play with 1,000 crore rupees every year, China and India will be played by us. We will be handling China like this. We will be handling Japan or uh, India like that. You know why? China and India put together is two-fifths of the world's population. And for China to get into Indian market and India to get into South Asian market, they cannot do without Naga territory. They cannot do without Naga hills. They can't go to Himalaya. Too cold, too high. You cannot do business. You cannot have infrastructure. You need the Naga corridor. But for Nagas, we have never imagined like that. We only think of going to Delhi, give something like this to one minister and take photograph and say, please give us 10 cross contract, 5 cross contract, 20 cross contract. The Naga mind ends with one gift and application. We need to change. How many Jabamese will become very rich? God alone knows. What your mind can conceive and believe, you can achieve. Not by me. That's what Napoleon said. And I would like to say another word. Pearl S. Buck, he said, the young do not know enough to be prudent, and therefore they attempt the impossible and achieve it generation after generation. So you people who are young here, the young do not know enough to be prudent. And therefore they attempt the impossible and achieve it generation after generation. I want you people to attempt the impossible. Don't tell me that the Tetsumi person once told us to do business and I'm getting only 50 lakhs in a year. No, don't come to me for 50 lakhs. 
50 lakhs is only one fortunate car. I'm not interested. But if you come to me and saying that now I get 10 crores in a year, then we will eat together. We will laugh together. I don't know how to dance, but I will dance with you. Then at that time, I will say, Jobame people have come out of age. They are no more sleeping. And if some of you come to me saying that after 15 years, I have a business of 100 crores, then I will tell you, make a building much better than this. This is also good. I'm so happy to see this in your village. But when you are a rich man, you should make something much more better than this. Donation to your village is possible. How do you do it? Mindset. Mindset. Shift of mindset. And so I want to let you know that we all must encourage each other. Please continue thinking differently and working hard for wealth creation, not only for yourself, but for your people. And I want to share with you one saying which is written by an anonymous person. Entrepreneurship is living a few years of your life like most people want, will not, so that you can spend the rest of your life like most people cannot. I repeat, entrepreneurship is living a few years of your life like most people want, so that you can spend your the rest of your life like most people can't. Please think differently. My next speaker will be sharing with you on your career guidance and also probably for some of you to think about government job. Very good, nothing wrong in it. You must carry on. I am a social entrepreneur. I am only employing 150 people. Tomorrow, as I told you, after five years, when you meet me, you might meet me as a business entrepreneur. And who knows, I will be praying to God to help me. I might be employing 500 people. I want to employ 1,000 people. And if God opens ways for me, I actually want to employ 10,000 people. Why? Because when I was 22 years of age and I worked in a company, that company was employing 20,000 people. Then I realized if that my owner was a Christian, my church would be finished. You know, every day my church would be getting one leg tight. And in those days, how much tight my village church used to get? 1994, you know, two lakh rupees. And just because of one individual businessman, my church would be super rich. And I realized, wow, this is business. I didn't know. And one leg a day, there is no New Year, there is no Christmas, there is no Good Friday. Every day, 365 days, that company used to get 10 lakhs minimum profit after paying all the salary. And I realized, wow, this is business. But that's not a big business. It is also a medium industry. So when I tell you to do business, I can tell you confidently because I have seen what it is. But you will not appreciate me telling to you about business. Because when we talk about business, you may be thinking of Mao women doing business in Mao Gate. No, that is livelihood. Our stomach, that is livelihood. I know one Naga who has stopped doing government contract and supply after he started partnering with MNCs in retail outlet. Today I will not tell you his name, although he's a friend of mine, because I need to reconfirm. But I can tell you he is one of the richest men in Nagaland. And I think 
he gets about 30, 40 crores in a year, which is good. But how I wish he gets 100 crores in a year. How I wish you people get 100 crores in a year. And if some of you decides to change your mindset and you shift your mind to that of entrepreneurship, I think 50 years Golden Jubilee celebration is challenging you and it will be a meaningful discussion. I hope after 50 years, if I am still alive, we don't know, I'm 50, going to be 52. Our resource person, he told me he is going to be 54. We don't know whether we'll be still alive then. But if some of your children can have 1,000 crore business, can have 10,000 crore business, a billionaire, because the Jabome people decided to also look at business and not just government job. When we celebrate a century, the celebration will be very different. That person who has 1,000 crore business will not come by fortuner. He will come by chopper. I'm serious because he has no time. That person will come by chopper and I hope that will be your century for ZYSO. Thank you.